Good times. Okay. Uh, well, that, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. So uh, Thomas Cox, I own um, a main parent company called MealFit here in Birmingham that originally started out as a meal planning company. So um, way, I mean, you know, 10 or 12 years ago, I was doing meal plans for people all over the world. And the way that came about was I just did it. I was working at a church. So the back, the way back story is I coached college football for 10 years and really felt the Lord leading us out of that. So I got out of coaching college football and then worked at a church. Well, the guy that was my boss at the church uh, said, hey, can you help me with a meal plan? Well, my background is not in food. I have a history degree and a master's in education administration, all because of coaching college football. But I got really involved in CrossFit on the front end of that that journey, of that, that time frame. And so probably 08, got really involved with that and lived in Cookville, Tennessee, which is really the the mecca of CrossFit as far as, you know, it's where Rich Froning is. And, and that's the, this, not where it started, but that's where it got big because, uh, because of him and his gym, honestly. And so um, we were training partners for years and years. And then we obviously got to compete in the CrossFit games on a team level. And so a lot of fun there. But when you get involved in CrossFit, they really force nutrition down your throat. So I was learned about nutrition just from a, from a drinking from a fire hose standpoint. And then I helped my boss with a meal plan. Well, then that he told his friend, it's just a domino effect for me. Now, let me go back. This is a time when you could not go online and get a meal plan for free. So I was charging for meal plans. and We had thousands of clients in 27 different countries. And um, you could go online now and get a meal plan for free. You couldn't do that 12 years ago. So I did that for a little bit. Um, and then started working coaching hours again. My wife was very gracious about that. And so I got out of, I started, stopped working at the church and started doing the meal, pl meal planning, but I also started doing meal prep. So I was doing meal prep way before the HelloFresh and the, you know, all the different shipping companies. So we did that for a little bit and then we started catering. Well, I got out of the church, went on my own, was not, didn't have a salary for the first time. That was really scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we started catering. I had a 400 square foot barbecue joint that I was working out of. No heat, no air. Uh, it was <laughs> great. And then we grew from there into another location in downtown Cookville. So at that, I've always believed that you need three sources of revenue. So we were um, meal prep, we were catering, and then we were, it was a restaurant. It was just lunch five days a week, but it was pretty good. We were pretty busy. And we, we grew that. And then we got called to Birmingham to do the food for Highlands College. So for us, what we do here in Birmingham now, we have, we feed Highlands College. Mm -hmm. We have the meal prep service. We deliver to like 20 different gyms in Birmingham. And then also we do what I call business catering for meal prep for, for business, for like everyday businesses. So it's drop food off at your office, things like that. Mm -hmm. In 2019, we started a company called Table and Time, and I always credit Alice Head for this. Alice Head worked for Paula Dean, and then she worked for Southern Living, and she's been in the high-end hospitality world forever. She's really a just a, was a, a great mentor, but also a, just a very, very wise lady as far as all those intricacies are concerned. We were having a conversation one day, and she said, you need to change your name. And I was like, Meal Fit is the perfect name for healthy catering and meal prep. It's perfect. Right. And she said, we'll start another company. So I started, I sat on that for a year and then I started tabling time in late 2019 and Ari Hicks over at Hobson Ray helped me develop the brand. And I wanted, I explain it this way all the time. You've got a Lexus and you've got a Toyota and in all reality, they're the same car, mm -hmm. but one has a lot more fancy features than the other one. There's also a different price point. Yep. So with table and time, it is a lot more service. Meal fit, I'm coming to your office. I drop the food off. I say, do you need anything? And I leave. Everything's disposable. It's very clean. It's great food. It's just not next level service as far as just like having people there, passing apps, heated shafers, white tablecloths, things like that. Yeah. So we started table and time in 2019. It's, it's, it's been our number one driver as far as dollar amount of revenue. Um, 
every year the last, I guess, would be three years. So I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot, a lot of fun. And in the, the hospitality and food industry is, I love it. I love what we do in the hospitality and food industry because it's not restaurants. I am not a huge fan of restaurants. I love going to them, but I don't want to own one. And I say all that to say, um, everything I cook, I'm, it's already paid for before I cook it. Mm -hmm. Whereas at a restaurant, you have to buy those, you have to buy those things and hope that Gail comes to eat at my restaurant. And I just, it's, it's risky. It's really risky. You know, um, I have, yeah, I've worked in a ton of restaurants and so I have some restaurant experience. And it's funny. Anytime I go to a restaurant and I see a big menu, oh. I start to, I start to, I'm like, how do they deal with, with food costs and with, and with food just dying when you've got this huge, you know, list of things that you're, you're trying to serve people that are, you know, that are different from each other too, right? I mean, I'm sure the food waste is huge in, huge. in a restaurant. Huge. Can't imagine what it is. So yeah, yeah, and and I'm I'm with you. I don't want to imagine what it is. I don't want to ever have to do that. So, so yeah. So so that, so um, when you and I worked together a little bit, uh, we. Uh, you know, you were, you were working on developing the catering part of, uh, meal fit. H how has that been going, um, the last 12 months or so? I've learned that that is a relationship business, that it is a thing where you have to do a good job. Number one, which is in every business, you have to do a good job. Number one, and you have to get, it's a repeat business thing. So I've got to get in relationship with people and then get them to continue to use us on a regular basis. That's the main thing. So it's finding those people, finding those like pharmaceutical reps or business admins that are doing lunch every day at their office or every three, three days or whatever. And I got to get, I got to get to know them. The thing that I push back against is I'm not taco mama, um, Jim and Nick's tzatziki's that you see on every corner in Birmingham. So I'm not a mm -hmm. restaurant and I, I'm, yeah. I'm super thankful for that. But that's the, that is a little bit of a drawback because I am not top of mind. But when you use us, it's a lot. We make life easier. And I want Susie, the farmer rep, or Susie, the ad man, or Johnny, the whoever, to send a text to me or my team, to my team, and say, Thursday, 1130, 45 people, this address. Thumbs up, done. And that's, that's the goal for what we do is to make it as easy as possible on people. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, planning events and food is a challenge, right? And sure. if you're something, even if you do it all the time, it's, it's work. It's a lot of work planning any kind of event. So anytime that someone, a partner can help make that easier for you, that's obviously going to, you know, that's going to make, that's one less thing you've got to deal with um, when putting that all together. Cause ultimately if you're putting an event together, you're either speaking or you're managing a bunch of speakers and you're trying to create relationships with people. And the last thing you want to deal with is napkins and, you know, you don't want to do flatware it. and stuff. You don't want to have to worry about. I, I try to tell, I, I try to tell people all the time, we don't do a ton of weddings, but we do the, a, a handful of nice weddings. My goal with those. So there's, there's a wedding planner and then there's an event planner, a corporate event planner. Those are the two big people that we deal with a lot. It's mm -hmm. great to deal with them because they know what they want 90% of the time. And if you can build relationships with people that trust you, it makes your life easier because they can, they'll give it to you and let you run with it. But it also is a situation where I am making their life easier because I, they are trusting me to do whatever service they've hired us to do. And it, that's a, that's a wonderful feeling to know that I, I am helping them, but also they trust us. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what, Kind of talk to me a little bit about what the next, you know, 12 to 24 months looks like for you guys. What's the growth strategy? So the growth strategy for, for, for meal fit and table and time are obviously the, the biggest. I, let me say this. Let me go back. I am not concerned with 300%, 500% growth. I know that that is possible, but I also know that I would rather grow slow and steady as opposed to just like super fast and get out of control. Because when things get out of control, you have a tendency to um, not, you have this tendency to have more blind spots. 
I want to try to avoid those blind spots as much as possible. So the strategy for us is to continue to create more relationships with Table and Time and um, deliver the best service possible. That's so obvious, though. But I'll say this. This sounds really silly, Gail. The number one thing that helps us in getting business and growing is calling people back. And that sounds so <laughs> silly. I did a video about calling back. Just call people back. Just yeah. pick up when someone calls and you don't answer, call people back. And I can't tell you how many people from the mortgage industry, from the construction industry, from the planning industry, I, they were all over the map, bro. And they were like, absolutely. If you just call, I can't tell you how many times I've heard, hey, I, I've called four caterers and you're the only ones call us back. That's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. But I've experienced it also. I, there's a company. It's so funny. We have a, we have a lake house at Weiss Lake in, in uh, North Alabama, Northeast Alabama. Mm -hmm. And there's an extermination company that we have, to, you know, like getting sprayed for mosquitoes and things like that. They are unreal. They, Gail, they answer every time I call. They answer every time. And I'm just like, hey, thank you so much for answering the phone every time someone calls. And it's just like we hear it all the time. We hear it all the time. We tr we'll try to be here. And that, so that's it's, crazy. It's, the most basic bit of showing up is that people are like they're, they're falling over themselves because you'll actually answer the phone. That's right. That's right. So that uh, is number one. I think uh, number two is we're trying to do just from a from a digital standpoint, trying to do more video content for people because people like video. It catches their eye. Um, I'm not doing a ton of SEO. I'm doing some Facebook, I mean, some social media ads. Um, but it's, um, I mean, we're not changing a whole lot. It's just continuing to get more, more customers and do a good job and get them to repeat and then telling their, their other friends. Um, one of the things we did add, though, is we started doing these fresh food vending machines. And I think we've got nine of them right now. And they are, they're doing well. And I got to nine of them. And I've got a friend in Texas that's got 26 of them, 27 of them. And she's wonderful. It's, it's, this, it's this girl named Brittany, and she's just helped us so much. Uh, she's a little younger than I am, but she's really honestly been a mentor to me because she's really, really good in the space, and she's helped me a ton. So we've got these in Birmingham. At, we've got them at diff different offices. We've got them at a couple hospitals and things like that. So it's been really, really good. Um, the biggest thing is finding a location that, will, that, can, that can make you money, have enough foot traffic to make you money, because there's always someone in the crowd that wants something a little bit healthier than just vending vending foods so yeah it's been really good have um i think at some point we might have even talked about something similar to that in a grocery store or grocery stores open to letting you put those in um they probably would be i just think that there's i i don't want to deal with all the other things in the grocery store i think there's a high risk there mm -hmm. and so i'd rather be direct to consumer as far as that's concerned I don't yeah. want to be a wholesaler at all because there's 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 already not a ton of profit in food anyway. And so I'd mm -hmm. rather be a, a direct to consumer as opposed to a wholesaler. And it just makes more sense for us to to have different locations and vending in those locations. Yeah, no, that 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 makes a ton of sense. I, I was thinking about it from the the target market perspective of if someone's shopping at the grocery store, they're likely shopping for a healthier option. Sure. And if they're going to, you know, a, a fast food restaurant or even any kind of restaurant for them. Right. Matter. Um, but yeah, that, that, that does make a lot of sense. And obviously there's a whole lot more competition. And, um, I mean, that's when I'm going to the grocery store, I'm trying to get something that's going to be a little bit better for me. A little bit better. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so really you're, you know, you're looking at that organic growth, which does make a whole lot of sense. You talked about blind spots, which is a true, you know, that's, you know, and I know for every business that growth, it's not to say that growth isn't hard. But what's harder is that finding the people to help you with that growth, because, sure. you know, saying yes to someone like, oh, yeah, I can do that. But then making sure you can deliver on all those things is important, you know, as you move forward. So that that all makes a whole lot of sense. I love the obviously video content. Um, social, has that been a driver for you guys? For Table and Time, yes. Uh, we have a form that we're a lot of inbound because it's really hard to tell who's getting married. We're a lot inbound. And so when people say, I, we always have a, a form that says, hey, where, how did you hear about us? It's two things. It's Google and Instagram. 
Yeah. Those are the two things. And so with what we do with table and time, it's really, really pretty. And I, and I don't want to sound just, you know, naive, but it's just, it looks good. We make the food look great. And that catches people's eye when they're looking to have a, a higher end experience. And so when we can make the food look great, that's, that's the, one of the first things we hear is, hey, your, your food looks so beautiful. Great. Thank you. And then we proceed from there. Um, yeah. We are higher end. We, get, we are expensive as far as those things are concerned. But people, when people want a great experience, we can, we can deliver on those things for sure. So, um, you, you know, as, as far as is anything, is, is there anything else from a, a marketing or growth perspective that this kind of sounds like this is your, you know, this is your foundation of what you're doing. But do you see anything next steps wise that you're like, eh, I'm kind of thinking about doing this or this might be an experiment that we're going to try? Is there anything new out, out there on the horizon that you're looking at? For me, it's we've set up a really good team. We've got a good team from a back, from a non kitchen staff and I've got a really good team in the kitchen. So for me personally, what I'm trying to do is to any of the money that we make, I'm trying to deploy that capital into buying more businesses more things that can create more income for us. Um, some of those things may have to do with meal fit and table in time. And some of them don't. So for example, we just bought a destination wedding planning business in Costa Rica. Okay. So it is a, is a Costa Rica is one of the top locations in the world for destination weddings. And there's a bunch of great places down there to get married. And there's a trend of two things, people are getting people that are, people are waiting to a older age to get married, and the people in their late late twenties, early thirties, even their late thirties, who are getting married for the first time, aren't going and spending two hundred fifty three hundred thousand dollars on a wedding. Now, the country club, yeah, exactly. <laughs> there is a huge group of people out there that are that are. And it sounds horrible, but I just that are going to spend that hundred and fifty to even a million dollars on a wedding, which is mm -hmm. astronomical. Mm -hmm. But there, we got multiple planners in Birmingham that plan million dollar weddings, whether it be in Birmingham or in the Southeast. That's not who we're looking for. We're looking for the people that are getting married a little bit older and second marriages. So a great mm -hmm. friend of mine got married for the second time, was divorced and then married, married another girl and they went destination. Local weddings can be so expensive because when Gail and what's your wife's name? I forgot. Catherine. Gail and Catherine get married. There is social pressure from Catherine and from Gail to invite all these people and to the be at this event. Yeah. Well, so-and-so, well, so and so, well, so and so. Hey, we're getting married in Costa Rica. We would love for you to come, but we, if you don't, I totally understand. Right. And so what that does, it cuts back on the cost a little bit. Now, it's still expensive to go to Costa Rica and get married, but it's not near as what it would be with all the social pressure um, here in the States to get to have, you know, 300 people at a wedding. Yeah, you're not going to have that there. So, yeah. So we bought that. We've got a, I've got a planner in place uh, and she does a wonderful job. And um, we've just bought it and we're going down in a couple, three weeks to meet everybody and introduce ourselves to the to as the new owners. Because this business has been going for over 20 years. A lady, yeah. that's running, a lady that's running it is getting out. She wants to do more PR stuff. And uh, crazy the thing is, the the website, the all the handle is weddingscostarica.com. So, that'll work. Yeah, yeah that'll that's work. Pretty, pretty good. So, so how did you find it? Um, I follow a girl on social media called, her name's Cody Sanchez. And mm -hmm. Cody's whole thing is, I hate to say it like this, but screw Wall Street. We need to get back to Main Street. So she is more of a proponent for people owning businesses and people shopping local and things like that. Mm -hmm. And she makes this talk about it for years of, hey, there's there's millions of baby boomers retiring that have owned their own business that want to get out. But they just think they just have to shut their doors. Go buy the business. Put something into it that they haven't been doing. You know, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many business owners I've talked to in their 60s and 50s, 60s and 70s said, we haven't marketed in years. I spend zero dollars on marketing. Yeah. And that, but, but and they haven't grown astronomically over the years or, hey, we got all we want. I can't hear how many times I've heard, hey, we're as busy as we want to be, which is great. Yep. But yep. what if you added some tech? What if you added some some 
some more highly skilled people? What if you had some people that could help grow that thing? What could it be? Let's keep people in place. Let's keep existing workers in place if possible. Because a lot of times you have a small business owner that, that employs five families. I got, I got 12 families down there that I employ. That's a lot of, yeah. that's a lot of mouths that my business feeds. And so from that, we've, I post, I've been posting online, like, Hey, I'm looking for a business to buy. If you want to retire, let me know. I'd love to have a conversation. With you. And I've had four or five conversations. I've had a conversation with a lawn care guy. I've had a conversation with a lawn spray company. I've had a conversation with a construction guy. And this lady reached out and she said, Hey, love to have a conversation with you. This is what I'm looking to do. And we just started going down the rabbit hole. And then I owner financed it with her. Um, and we bought the business. So we're, we are beyond excited about the possibility of this thing growing. That's awesome. So where is it? Where is it based out of? Where it's based here. It's based where we are, but all the weddings happen in Costa Rica. So we put together all the travel, all the weddings, all the locations because we're preferred vendors at we're the preferred planner at some of those places, and then we put planners and vendors in place there, and then they show up and get married. It's extremely easy as far as just like again, I get I get back to the same things. I want to make your life easier. And yeah. so we're planning those things for those people. They show up and they, and we, we're in constant contact with our team. And it's not a, it's not, it's a 1099 team. So it's, it's, it's vendors in Costa Rica that we pay to run the events or to be a part of these things. Okay. No, it's all. So we actually, our family just went down there um, for spring break. Oh, and cool. we were, we were in Arnold and Tamarindo and, yeah. and, uh, and I, I think you may or may not remember this. My, my wife owns a travel agency. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's right. Plug for a little travel mama. No Anyways, uh, so she went and like toured a bunch of places and looked at a bunch of vendors. And we did we did stuff every day with a bunch, you know, with a bunch of different tour operators, um, just checking stuff out and had a big time there. So it's a, yeah. it's an awesome place to go. And that's why I was curious about the where's, when's and why's. Yep. Um, that's awesome, man. Congrats on that. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'll, I'll have to, I'll have to follow up with you on, on, uh, on how that, that goes over the next, you know, few years. Cause that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, all right. So we're going to, we're going to have a little fun here. Um, we're, we're going to kind of ease in, we're going to ease out of business and ease into, to what does Thomas do when he's not buying businesses and, uh, catering? Um, it's really a boring answer, Gil. I don't have many hobbies. Um, the biggest thing that I like to do is I'm a, I'm either working with my family, my wife and kids, uh, exercising or reading. Those are the things that kind of take up my time, uh, simply because I've got a 14, 11 and a seven year old, and I don't want to give up much of my time to do anything else other than to be with them or work. That's the, really the only things that I enjoy doing. So I'm not a golfer. Uh, now we like to travel. We're not huge travelers, but we like to travel as much as possible. And then also, I love watching my kids play sports. I got a daughter that plays volleyball and a son that plays basketball and football, and I, I love watching them. So that's a lot of fun for me. Yeah, the I found that as my kids have, are getting older, that really, if if you want to do something, you have to do something that they also can do with you. Sure. Right. That's Otherwise, you, you, yeah, I can't just go play golf by myself for no. four hours. Like no. that doesn't happen. OK. Um, well, you said books. Tell me about books. What are you reading right now? OK, so the first six months of this year, I read new stuff. The second six months of this year, I committed to reading old stuff that was great. Mm hmm. So I got that from Alex Hormozzi. He talks about, you know, people brag about reading bunches and bunches of books. He said, find the 10, 1500, 100 books that you think are great and fully digest and reread those and make sure you fully understand those. Um, so one of the books I'm reading, I'm, I'm reading a handful of things. My favorite book is um, the, tr um, the Wealthy Gardener. It is absolutely wonderful. I've read it twice. It's great. The, set, the book I'm reading right, I'm reading two things right now. I'm finishing up because we're a little bit over the, I'm, this book is bleeding in from the first six months, is a book called Magic Words. It's brand new, but it's a book called Magic Words. It's by the same guy, uh, Jonah, Jonah Berger, I think is his name. He's really, really good. And then I'm also rereading Psychology of Money. So those are the things that are on my, uh, now at, at night I read something a little bit uh, less, Learning, 
meaning like it's not teaching me something. And so I'm reading Cliff Sims, uh, Den of Vipers. Okay. Cliff is a local guy and he's a wonderful human being. And he spent um, a little over, a little under two years in the house, in the White House with Donald Trump and was one of his aides and one of his That's people. Right. I know so that. I'm reading yeah. his book uh, right now. So okay, so uh, read or listen. Read, read. I, I mean, there are some things that I listen to, but for the most part, I read. Uh, I don't. I listen some. I don't listen to tons and tons of podcasts, but I do have a couple that I listen to. Um, but for the most part, I'm I'm a I'm a reader. Yeah, I I um I wish we would have had Audible uh, when I was in school. I would have done. A lot better. So much more. Yeah. I can just, I can, I can retain so much more when I listen. I um, can. Uh, and I, well, I'll listen to them um, fast. Yeah. And then I'll typically go back and listen to them again. Gotcha. And, and that, cause I'll get, I, I get pieces out of it. And with most books I listen to, I get, you know, three to five concepts that are usable, you know, sure. in a five to seven hour book. Yeah, you know, and the rest of it is filler and whatever else. But these are all I, the three books you just talked about. I haven't, um, I haven't read or or listened in my case to any of those. As a parent, as a parent and business owner, Wealthy Gardeners is a must is a must read. Listen, it is. I don't know how well it'll listen. I just know that reading is wonderful. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah. All right. Um, so, do you remember the first car? That you drove the first car you had as a as a sixteen year old. Do you remember? Oh yeah, that? absolutely. I had it for. I got my license in 1996, and I had this car until probably 2010. Okay. So it was a black 1995 black Monte Carlo Z34. I drove the <laughs> snot out of that thing. It went from Birmingham to Atlanta. I moved from Atlanta to Raleigh, North Carolina, from Raleigh, North Carolina, to Cookville, Tennessee, and I drove it. I loved I just, it. I just imagined uh, the the movie with Adam Sandler where he goes back to high school and he turns on uh, Billy Squire and sits on the hood. Like That's that, right. that, You on that Monte Carlo. That's it. I loved it. I absolutely <laughs> loved it. So, yeah. I love it. That's awesome. All right. What was the first concert you ever went to? I went to a ton of concerts in high school and college. Mm -hmm. I want to say the first one I went to was Garth Brooks in like 1995 or 1996 or 1997. Right yeah. in the right in the height. That's a that's a hard act to follow, and I and in like I've seen him twice, and he is by far the best performer I've ever seen in concert. I mean, I don't care. I've seen them all. I've seen so many different people. And it is by far the best. I want to say that was the first one I ever went to, other than like a concert at a church or something like that. Yeah, we're not talking about that. I meant like yeah. a, the first musical, like sure. big band thing you went to go see, even if it was in a small venue. Are you a big yeah. country guy? I mean, I like it okay. Not a, I'm not a big music guy, though, uh, right now, Gail. I used to be a lot bigger into music. I'm really not a big music guy. Yeah. And so uh, I don't listen to a ton of music, uh, but I do. I do enjoy garth and and uh, those types of things okay all right yeah. so if you could i mean this is now you're saying not you're not a big music guy but i'll ask you this question anyways if you could go to any concert right now any any dead or alive who would you go see this is an honest answer i would take my 14 year old to taylor swift that's a and that's a really good answer that's what i would do because you, you can't get into that concert can you yeah, i mean you can it's cost you a lot though <laughs> that's right that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. Well, cool. Well, Thomas, I really appreciate all your time today. Sure. This is uh this has been this has been good. I certainly learned a few new things about you that I didn't know before and I did. I thought <laughs> I, I thought I knew a lot about you, but that's right. I got, I got a bunch of new stuff. So uh I appreciate it and uh and, and we'll uh we'll catch up soon and and uh and, and hopefully hear more about how everything's going in Costa Rica. Perfect. Hey, thank you so much, Gail. I appreciate it.